Lee model is a combination of Hurd and Knudsen formula and uh, our general clashes Clapeyron equation. From those two equations, we will derive uh, Lee model. So, compared to our normal continuity equation and energy equation, uh, in the evaporation, it is mainly about the mass transfer from liquid to fluid. I mean liquid to gas as well as the heat transfer between that liquid and gas. So those two extra terms uh, which we need to add to our continuity equation and energy equation. So mainly if you can have the mass transfer uh, with respect to the source term, obviously you will get the energy uh, source term when you multiply that mass rate into enthalpy or difference in enthalpy. So HFG. So if you can get that mass source term, so obviously you can add that with respect to the enthalpy and you can add that as an energy source term to the energy equation. So these two terms, if you add to the continuity and energy equation, uh, we can solve the evaporation and condensation any of these processes. So in that derivation of that mass source term and energy source term, here the models uh, are different. How we will uh, try to have the derivation of those source terms. So now if you go for the Lee model, uh, exactly in the Lee model, if you can take this black color as a single cell where uh, the fluid which is present on this side is a liquid on this side is a gas right so when the pressure inside the liquid at the interface if it is more than the vapor pressure that can gas has with respect to this temperature so if the temperature is t and the vapor pressure is p vap or pv at that temperature and if this pressure is more than this PV so some amount of liquid would evaporate and get into gas form so when this is happening so this is called evaporation Knudsen formula indirectly says that so you can see F is nothing but the flux that the what exactly the mass flow is happening or the mass flow rate is happening from liquid to gas so the units of the flux is kg per second per meter cube per unit volume how much is the mass that is flowing from liquid to gas it is proportional to the difference in pressures so this pressure is the liquid pressure what i have uh, spoken before and p sat is the saturation and vapor pressure that is occurs in the gas with respect to the temperature t so if this difference exists then there is a flux or the mass that is transferring from liquid to gaseous state so this is stated by Knudsen formula and beta is called accommodation coefficient so we will jump into this presentation so here you can see uh, this is the Lee model and with respect to Lee model uh, in any of your uh, manuals you can see that when the temperature is greater than T set we are here we will discuss about evaporation the reverse is nothing but condensation so if a uh, mass flow that is happening from evaporation uh, from liquid to vapor so that is given as coefficient into uh, alpha L and rho L alpha L rho L is nothing but uh, volume fraction and density of the liquids and T minus T set by T set and the units are kg per second per meter cube so if you can have this or if you can if you are able to know this mass transfer rate that is nothing but this m dot e r e is nothing but m dot e to v so this is a source term that would be added to the this vapor phase equation so that m dot e v we will try to derive with respect to this formula if we can get this formula how exactly we got this formula that is important so uh, it is obvious from the Hertz Knudsen formula that a flux is proportional to the difference in pressures and beta is called accommodation coefficient in general accommodation coefficient at equilibrium conditions the value is 1 equilibrium means the vapor turning into liquid liquid turning into vapor at that equilibrium condition the beta is 1 so in general you can consider beta as 1 m is a molecular weight and r is the universal gas constant and t is the saturation temperature so and we know the classic clapeyron equation uh, which is a saturation curve equation where the pressure gradient with respect to temperature how it is proportional to the latent heat so if you consider that equilibrium uh, saturation curve so we can state p star and t star are nothing but the temperature and the pressure of the liquid that is just about to evaporate so right and that at that t star what is the p sat or the vapor pressure and at that p star what is the t sat so these are the two terms uh, what we take consider into our derivation so this p star and t star we know from the liquid interface so as i have mentioned so this is nothing but p star and this is t star right 
so this p star we need to find because we uh, that is an uh, unknown term with respect to uh, our uh, transient simulation or steady state simulation any simulation because this term varies with respect to each cell volume each cell volume has different this liquid pressures at the interface so if you are in a position to find this p star and t star then you can substitute in the knudsen formula which is unknown to us so that we will derive from the clashes clapeyron equation so p star and t star that is a gradient so with respect to this along the curve only dp by dt is available so now we can write dp by dt as p star minus p sat by t star minus t sat so we have uh, deployed that gradient into this equation and we will substitute this p star minus p sat in the herge knudsen formula with respect to this clashes clapeyron equation so finally we are left this equation and i have already mentioned beta is nothing but accommodation coefficient and its value is 1 and uh, if you can uh, refer to your uh, any of the previous lectures of mine you can find about interfacial area density so interfacial area density is nothing but the vapor fraction that is or vapor surface area if it is projected on to the cell volume that is ai by the total volume of the cell so this is called the interfacial area density so any vapor phase surface that is projected onto the cell that surface area by total volume of the cell gives the interfacial area density and if the uh, volume uh, sorry diameter of the vapor if you take it consider it as a constant so we can uh, say this ai by v cell is equals to 6 into vapor phase fraction by the diameter of the vapor bubble so that uh, if you try to keep in the above equation so if you multiply it ai by v cell on the right hand side that is 6 alpha v by d so finally you are left with this equation so now if we can compare our formula what we have uh, got it from our manual so this is that mass transfer that happens from liquid to vapor so if you can compare both these two the coefficient value we left with 6 by d beta root over m by 2 pi r t sat l into rho l by rho l minus rho g so in our uh, fluent uh, whether it a view of model or eulerian model you can sign, uh, find that coefficient of vapor phase and evaporation phase and condensation phase uh, we need to fill manually so that coefficient we will get from this formula but this formula uh, is a variable uh, and it's it's not available readily in any of the literature it is purely dependent on the experimentation values and so it is a uh, depend on uh, different conditions like environmental conditions or the equilibrium conditions and anything so this we cannot uh, give as a constant value this depends on each and every experimentation so that's the reason why uh, evaporation and condensation model that we use a Lee model is not that accurate because uh, in order to find this coefficient we can we need to go only for experimentation or in order uh, or else we can just uh, find these values but these values again uh, vary with respect to uh, mainly the tsat so which is the saturation temperature that varies with respect to pressure and this diameter of the vapor bubble that is also not constant so all these variables we cannot uh, find with respect to the regular uh, our governing equations so this coefficient manually we need to give and this is a uh, not completely acceptable uh, solution when you try to solve using uh, Lee model so that's the reason why uh, Lee model has its uh, own uh, drawbacks when you try to implement and now uh, I'll just try to show you in the answers fluent by implementing a Lee model a small example and, uh, and after that uh, we'll just check and go into the thermal phase change model how well or how good it is compared to the Lee model and yeah now we'll go into the fluent so you can see on the screen so i have just uh, clicked on transient with x as 9.81 so gravity is in the in this direction and i've uh, activated multiphase on with uh, my eulerian uh, model has been uh, activated with energy on and uh, turbulent layer as a uh, sst k omega and after that i went into materials with uh, water liquid and water vapor i have copied it and then uh, just go back to the multi-phase and go into phases with primary phase is water liquid and uh, secondary phase is water vapor and uh, if you go into phase interactions uh, you can see all these drag coefficients and uh, uh, your virtual mass coefficient so I have activated virtual mass and the surface tension along with uh, 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 drag coefficient as killer nomen with the default model
and he then mass transfer have activated heat transfer as range marshal and mass transfer as evaporation condensation so in the evaporation condensation I have given a lee model with evaporation frequency as 10 right so click on ok and after that just have closed it and then the inlet velocity term I have given uh, uh, with turbulent intensity as 5 and hydraulic diameter as an inlet diameter which is 0 0.006 in my case and with the phase 1 as water and the phase 1 temperature I have given as 350 Kelvin and so and the wall uh, is, uh, this is the only wall which is the bottom wall there is no heat on the top wall so in the bottom wall I has given a, a temperature of 500 Kelvin so and after that have been uh, initialized and uh, during the initialization uh, I have passed the entire uh, volume uh, with uh, 350 Kelvin and that to water so I just, you can just go into phase 1 which is water so in the water I have clicked on temperature it is T50 Kelvin I will just click on this phase and patch and after that you can go to phase 2 with volume fraction as 0 and I have passed it so and after running uh, 500 time steps with this as the time step size I have got these counters which you can see this is the volume phase fraction and you can just uh, get back to our reports and you can just check the mass flow rate so I'll just click on to the fluxes mass flow rate and at the outlet what is the mass flow rate so just click compute so you can see this as your mass flow rate uh, for the entire mixture but for uh, vapor we'll just consider phase 2 and just click on compute so this is the mass flow rate which is uh, 0 0.00439 so these are the results what we get from a Lee model uh, using the our uh, uh, Eulerian method with mass transfer and heat transfer so in the part 2 video we will just check down with the thermal phase change model uh, what are the equations that will be solved and along with that we will try to solve with the answers fluent and check the results